Now I want to talk a little bit about building habit-forming products. Uh, it could be uh, websites, apps, even physical products. And the expert on this topic is my friend Nereal, who wrote a book called Hooked. Uh, and he worked with BJ Fogg at Stanford. That name keeps cropping up. And he translated some of that behavior knowledge into uh, an understanding of how products become habits. Uh, this book was initially self-published, became a cult bestseller in Silicon Valley, uh, ended up getting picked up by a major publisher and is now a legitimate bestseller. I encourage you to pick that up if you want to know more, more about it. But we're going to cover some of the key concepts in that. In that book, he looks at how uh, products like Facebook and Yelp and Instagram succeeded, why so many other products that were apparently very similar failed. His answer is what he calls his hook model. And it's a very simple four-step process that involves a trigger, an action, reward, and investment. And uh, if we go back to my persuasion slide, it maps just about perfectly to his two steps of the trigger, which uh, I call my nudge, and the action, which is actually getting the customer to the bottom of the slide to do what you want them to do. Uh, only he adds this great recirculation step of showing how you can get them to do it not just once, but to keep doing it over and over again to the point where it becomes a habit. So looking at the steps in this process, the very first one is the trigger. And early on, this trigger is an external trigger. It could be an invitation to install the app, or if you have the app installed, it could be an email that is suggesting, giving you a reason to post. It could be a tweet, whatever. And that characteristic of those early triggers is that it tells you what to do. So for instance, if I'm on Facebook, I get a note near commented on my update. There's also a link to say, check it out. This is a fully loaded trigger. It prompts me to see what near had to say. And there's also the way to check it out. So I go back to the app or go back to the website to do just that. Your goal in, with these triggers in the long run is to internalize it. So that rather than requiring that notification, that ping on your phone or that email in your inbox, instead, it rises from an emotion. You're bored, you're frustrated, you're kind of sad, uh, or maybe you're hungry, you go, want to get you hungry, you go to Yelp, or you know, you know what to do. I'm bored, I'm gonna open up Instagram because I'm gonna see some funny photos uh, or some travel photos or something that's gonna distract me from my current state of boredom. Once you achieve that goal, you have become a habitual product. But to get there, you need those external triggers too. Uh, and in general, these very successful products all use a combination of internal and external triggers all the time. Now, when that trigger happens, it takes you to the action level. So once you get that trigger, you go to the app or the product or the site and do something. You may post something, you may reply to something, you may like something, post a photo, but you do something, you take an action. And that is uh, what is the desired goal. And for that, you will get a reward, not necessarily instantaneously, but very soon you'll get a reward for that. People will comment on your post, they'll like your post. The key thing is that these are variable rewards. If the same five people retweeted your tweet every time, or the same five people liked your Facebook post, that would get really boring really fast and there'd be no incentive to post. But in fact, the rewards on all these networks are variable. You post something and maybe just get a few likes. You post something else and suddenly you get a ton of shares and likes and uh, other things. They're telling you, okay, wow, this is really good. You're good and so on. Uh, your brain lights up from all those rewards. There are other kinds of rewards too, information rewards. People use Google and there's probably nothing more habit forming than Google because they get great information rewards. You type anything into Google and you will get results. Type funny dog photos in and I guarantee you, you will get funny dog photos. You won't know what kind of photos you'll get. These rewards are not the same, but when you type something in, you'll get something novel for your brain. It'll be a variable reward, uh, but Google always delivers. So uh, it's very predictable. And this is why um, search engines like Bing have really had such difficulty making big inroads into Google's market share. And they've become a habit. It's tough to break a habit. The next phase is what Nier calls the investment phase. And by that, he means that using the product actually stores value for you. That when you make these posts, you get these likes and you get people following you and so on, that you are building your value within that product. So for instance, I've been on Twitter now for quite a few years and I've got a lot of followers. I've got a big body of tweets there and so on. Uh, and 
Uh, if somebody came along and said, we'll pay you money to be on our little messaging system instead of Twitter, uh, I would not do that unless it was a really large amount of money because I have so much invested in Twitter. And this is true for many products that you use. It's true for all the social networks you use, uh, other products. Uh, you simply, by virtue of knowing how to use them, uh, it's easier to keep using them to, than to figure out how to use other products. Even hardware products like Amazon's Alexa can become an investment because the more you use it, the more she understands what you're asking for and the more skills you teach your little Echo and it becomes more valuable. You're storing value uh, in your Echo the more you use it. Now, a key part of this is that your action and the investment load the next trigger. Uh, that when you make that post and people like it, that is loading another trigger like an email or a notification that goes back to you and brings you back to engage you. This is what makes it the circular process. And the more you use that, it keeps adding value and it's just a circular process that works whether it's an app whether it's a website or even physical products. I encourage you to check out uh, the book for more info.